Hey, Daniel, how are you doing today? Hey, Tom. Good, good. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thanks for uh, spending some time with me today. So um, I want to pick your brain today a, a little bit about the latest and greatest buzz that everyone's talking about. Chat GPT, Bing Chat and all those GPT technologies that are kind of invading the world of technology right now. So um, the, one of the first things I want to ask you, and I've been very confused about this, is when do you use GP, Chat GPT versus Bing Chat that's kind of available today? What are the two differences between the between the two? I have no idea. Could you tell me a little bit more about them and when you use each one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bing GPT, Chat GPT. There's, um, you know, those are the two that I use most. But there's even tools outside of that. Um, but the way I think about it is, um, Chat GPT. Uh, I think it was like one of the first, you know, AI um, generative AI. Um, tools that came out, but ChatGPT, its database is up to 2021. So it's it's only got it's only got that data for 2021. Bing GPT is current with the Internet, so it's just like, you know, searching on Google or or Bing. It's got the latest and greatest. So whenever I think about use it like where I use both, if I'm looking at, you know, trying to find out what the current information is about a customer or something like that. I'll typically go to Bing GPT and say, hey, you know, what are the recent news on this specific account? Bing GPT is is the place to go. But if I want to create, you know, do more creative things and actually use that information and generate some kind of an output, I'll typically pull that into chat GPT. Cool. So I'm always looking for new ways to embrace technology. And as a sales professional myself, I spent hours of time researching customers to make relevant messaging for them, whether that be reading their 10K, listening to their most recent sales calls and things like that, all their websites, scouring for all that information, who is who within that company. I spent hours and hours doing that, right? Yeah. So I wanted to learn from you is some of the ways that I could use GPT, the various GPT technologies, whether that be Bing or Chat GPT, to make you know some compelling arguments to customers about why they should embrace some new technologies and build out value propositions and point of views and things like that. Could you help yeah. me with that? I absolutely can. I absolutely can. I've been going down this ChatGPT rabbit hole uh, really since it came out in December. I stumbled across uh, a Gary V video where he was just uh, talking about GPT and just telling everybody like, "Go play with this tool. This is the future." And I did just that and my mind was blown. And for context, I am fairly new to sales and I actually um, you know, moved into a, a strategic sales role at Microsoft where we're selling Dynamics. So it's a very broad portfolio and a lot of information and it's a strategic sales role. So you, you really need to be able to you know, articulate um, how these technologies can help customers meet you know, strategic goals and the tool has been extremely helpful for me for that so i can share a couple of slides here which could give you a good idea on how to on how to to use this i hope it'll help chat gpt right um the way i like to think about chat gpt what it is uh is really think of it as the most powerful blank brain in the world um it doesn't necessarily know anything until you tell it what you want it to know, how you want it to think, what you want it to be. Um, the context that you put into it is extremely important in order to get the output that you want. So oftentimes, you know, you hear people say, hey, create me a prospecting email for a CIO of this company um, and they'll enter that in and it'll give you a super generic response. But if you say, hey, based on what the CIO cares about for this year, like based on the, the challenges they're experiencing in this economic climate, how can this solution specifically help them with that problem? Like giving it as much information as you can up front is going to get you the best output. So in terms of, you know, the value that it's given to me as a sales professional is it's helped me save time, help me become more efficient, really helped me develop more personalized messaging, understanding my customers better and being prepared um, in a fraction of the time that that it usually would take. And here on the right, you could see some some of the ways that that you can use it that I have used the tool um, in my role. So really, 
um, you know, researching accounts, building thoughtful point of views, um, creating those prospecting um, emails, even responding to emails. You know, oftentimes as sales professionals, we might be getting specific um, questions related to our solutions or something that we might not know. We have to go dig the information out or go on the website, ask our peers. Um, using these GPT tools, you're able to um, to create those responses to get that information in a fraction of the time. But I think a, a good way to kind of understand how the tool works is to maybe run through a use case. And I think we can all relate to this. Maybe it's it's Monday morning. Maybe we had a busy weekend and now we're starting the week. We're getting ready and, and we've got meetings coming up, but we're not ready yet. And um, let's think we're we're meeting with a CIO of a dairy manufacturing company in a couple hours. Um, it's maybe a monthly stand up. Maybe we've connected with this account before. We, we've heard there's potential opportunity, but we really want to come to the table with a tailored point of view, uh, be a trusted advisor, uncover more potential opportunity and bring value. Um, so how would you go about that? Typically in the past, you know, you, you want to go on their website, you know, what's top of mind for this company? How can Microsoft specifically help them? Like building that, that message, that point of view takes time. And using GPT, you could be ready in a fraction of that time. So let me show you. So taking that use case, you go to Bing GPT, given that's the most current information, and you put a prompt in there that says, you know, what are some of the problems I could be experiencing if I'm a CIO at this company? Think about industry trends, current economic headwinds, etc. And ChatGPT or Bing GPT, you know, searches the internet, does some research. As you can see, it takes a look at McKinsey, takes a look at Tech Target, takes a look at Forbes, and it puts out this output. You know, as a CIO at this company, you could be ex uh, facing some of the following problems. A volatile economic, political, environmental climate that has affected the entire supply chain in recent years, you know, inflation, changing consumer behavior and the need for better consumer insights, a competitive and innovative market that requires you to keep up with the latest technologies, you know, cybersecurity, declining demand for cow based products due to the rise of plant based alternatives. You know, that's a unique one that it, it took the fact that I told them they're in a specific industry, they're they're part of that specific company, and it, it created a, a tailored message. It's even got this, it even has references in there as well, right? That's pretty cool. Exactly. Where yeah. All that information. But no, I spent hours doing that. That is amazing. Yeah, and Bing GPT is is yeah Bing GPT, and I think Google Bard is is the is the competitor. They're um, they're using their search capabilities in order to, to pull the references, which is great. Chad GPT does not do that, um, which is why right. I start with Bing GPT first. And so using that same prompt, taking a step further, further, you know, how could now I'm working on building that point of view so that I can I can deliver that message. So given those problems, how could the Microsoft partnership and dynamics and power platform help me with where I'm at today? I'm in the process of evaluating a new asset management solution. That's the pre previous potential opportunity I heard about, right? Um, I'm focused on delivering business value through operational efficiency and finding ways to add value to my organization. Again, I'm still embodying the persona of the CIO because I want to put myself in their shoes and be that trusted advisor um, based on what he cares about, right? So here's the output it gave me based on that. You know, the Microsoft partnership and dynamics and power platform can help you with your current situation in several ways. You can use, you know, Microsoft asset management, an advanced module for managing assets and maintenance jobs and dynamics. Here's how the solution can help. You can use Copilot, um, which is Microsoft's Microsoft embedded all of the GPT capabilities within our business applications portfolio. Um, so that's a, that's a hot one. And it's cool because if you you if you did this in chat GPT, you would not necessarily get this output, but because it's Bing and it has the most current information, it'll pull those those new capabilities in, which is great. That's pretty cool. Um, Power Apps, Power BI. I think you guys get the idea. But yeah, taking it a step further, you know, oftentimes we're we're in these conversations with executives and and they're asking, you know, what what makes Microsoft unique? Why should I work with Microsoft? You know, Salesforce has the same thing, and there's other one-off solutions that that are great too. What what makes Microsoft different? So anticipating that question based on what the CIO cares about, based on what, what the point of view, 
how how can I address that objection? Um, so using that same thread in Bing, um, I put in what makes Microsoft unique? Why should I work with Microsoft over a one off solution? And it outlines specifically what my, makes Microsoft unique with the trust and security, the innovation, how much we're, we're investing um, in research and development, scalability, reliability, flexibility, value and savings. So all of this is just given me, given us ammo to build that point of view. Now, um, now I'm switching. I'm keeping that same thread in Bing and I'm moving over to ChatGPT. OK, and I go to ChatGPT. And I'm now I'm taking the persona of myself of who I am. You are a strategic seller at Microsoft. I'm telling ChatGPT this again, the blank brain, right? Doesn't know anything until you tell it what you want it to be, how you want it to think. So you are a strategic seller at Microsoft. You are preparing for a meeting with the CIO of this company tomorrow. Please leverage this information to create a potential talk track. My intent again, painting the vision, telling it what you want it to do. My intent with this call is to add value to their business, tell them about some interesting solutions and why I think it could help them, build trust, ask some insightful questions, which gives me a better understanding of opportunity within the account, add value to their business, tell them about an interesting solution and why I think it could help them. Please construct your response in the following format. Intent for call, insightful questions to ask, and then all of the rest. And after that, I took in the same prompt, I took that output from Bing GPT and I copy and pasted it so that it would use that information. That's pretty cool that you've kind of. From a mindset perspective, if I'm Googling something, for example, or binging it for that matter, right? Historically, I would try and keep it as short and concise as possible to mm -hmm. get the best results. But that whole paradigm seems to have completely shifted for GPT. You're literally giving it an essay and telling them exactly what you want and you're fine tuning it. And I, I guess it's going to give you the right results, right? <laughs> it's pretty well, here's incredible. The yeah, here's the I mean, here's the output that we got. So in exactly the format that I asked them that I asked it to do, right? It has the intent for the call. So based on what I told them, our goal for the meeting is to better understand, you know, the challenges they're facing, um, explore how the Microsoft partnership um, mm -hmm. can help. Uh, solutions like Dynamics Power Platform Asset Management can help them drive operational efficiency and add significant value. It's got my discovery questions. Um, you know, what specific challenges are you facing in in those areas? Uh, what's your expectations? You know, how do you see, how do you see the changes in consumer behavior affecting your technology strategy? Pretty insightful questions. I mean, obviously, this is just the template that you can use and you can add your own stuff, but it gives you a great framework. And yeah. uh, what I love here is. Um, you know, oftentimes I'm sure sales professionals can relate. You go into a meeting and you find yourself, you almost feel like you're, you're like interrogating the customer. You know, what are your priorities for the next six to 12 months? How do you think Microsoft can help all these things? But it's a way different conversation if you come with something to the table, you know, yeah. saying like, hey, did some research. Seems like you guys are going through these things. He, I, you know, based on that, I have a hypothesis of how I think Microsoft can help. Can I run that by you? Um, you know, here's how I think it can help. Here's the value I think it would drive. Much different conversation and a, and a great way to build trust and, and become that trusted advisor. But, you know, here's the output. What do you think? It's incredible. This, I mean, it looks like something that's come off like a marketing collateral, like one page of the way it's even formatted perfectly with bullets that are concise and they get to the point. It's exact. It's exact. It would take me hours to put this together, and I would always be second guessing myself. But yeah. as a starting point for a couple of minutes of work, this is game changing. Now <laughs> I can't wait to start using this. Yeah, yeah. And this is like, you say, say that ChatGPT gave you this output, and you're, you know, you're reading through the questions, and you're thinking, hey, you know, some of these questions are pretty generic. I, I need to update it. You can continue to engage with this thread and say, hey. These questions are kind of generic. Please make them more relevant for this company based on, you know, X, Y, and Z that I learned in this Bing Jet, Jet GPT thread, you know, and it can continually update it. You can say, hey, make it shorter, put it in bullet points, add another section around this. So you can continue to work with the with the thread to, to get the output that you want. Um, to take it a step further, you know, one of the things that we obviously need to do as salespeople is uh, prospect is 
you know, outreach to customers. So kind of continuing with the same thread, I, uh, the next response I said was, you know, thank you. You're very prepared for this meeting, but the CIO didn't show, but you really value the partnership with this customer and you want to add value to him by trying to solve his business challenges with Microsoft solutions. You want to invite him to webinars, share articles with him, evangelize new solutions. Your goal is to reach out to him at least two times a month for the next six months. Please create this content for me. Make it personalized where you can. Please base your response based on what I provided in my previous prompts. Always give off the energy and spirit of relationship, helping, and solving real business problems. Again, you've and, gone like way <laughs> prescriptive, exactly what you want down to a T. And again, it's exactly. a paradigm shift. If you're doing that in Google, it'll just be like, sorry, cannot, yeah, cannot respond. Yeah. But it, exactly. I just find this mind boggling that you can put so much information in and, and it's reasoning over it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you got. <laughs> and here, so based on what I said, it gave me a six month plan with biweekly touch points to emphasize the spirit of relationship building, helping and problem solving, all based on our po initial point of view, right? So taking a look, at, it's got a variation of emails, of webinars, of article shares, case studies. Um, you know, the first one, personalized message, introduced the breadth of Microsoft solutions, specifically Dynamics Power Platform, and how it can address unique challenges in the dairy industry while soliciting input on their specific pain points. Um, so again, just this, this is just high level, but even after this, I can continue with this prompt and say, hey, you know, I really like a message one. Help me build this out. What questions do you need uh, do you need or answers from me in order to give me the best output? That's another good. That's another good prompt. So like have it ask you questions to give you the best output. Um, but I hope this kind of gives you an idea. Here. Yeah, this it's is amazing. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Could you show me some of this in real time? I can. I can. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, another thing. Just as since we're talking about uh, prospecting. You know, oftentimes we, we have our inbound marketing signals. I know at Microsoft, we definitely do. If, if, you know, if somebody attends a webinar or, or downloads something, um, it's a signal that, you know, the lead might be hot that we can reach out. And this is me using Bing GPT for some of those signals. So, you know, I noticed the CTO registered for a webinar to learn more about Dynamics customer service and how it enables um, service agents to engage with their customers across channels. And I gave it a little bit of a blurb on what that um, the webinar was about, right? And I say, you are a Dynamics salesperson, please research this person. And I put in the name of the executive that downloaded it and then reach out to him with linkage on common problems we're seeing in customer service and how Dynamics can help. Ask if he's interested in discussing his specific goals in the area. Please make the note personal, short and direct. And it gave me a, an output, uh, with you know links to his LinkedIn profile, like specifically based on what he could care about, um, linkage on how Dynamics could help, and exactly you know are you interested in discussing your customer service challenges and opportunities with me? If so, please let me know what day and time works for you. So, you know, in order to build this this point of view, this linkage, this kind of personalized email, it takes time, and it would have taken me a ton of time to research their website, all that thing. But with this, with a quick prompt, um, here it yeah, is. For sure. Yeah, it's gone to LinkedIn. It's done all the background research, Zoom info. You can see. Yeah. yeah, those are the places I go to, right? But did you even find the right person, finding the right one and connecting with them, waiting for them to come back to you and scrolling through? Yeah, that just takes, it, it takes time, right? And it's going to avoid that and allow me to focus on more conversations with customers, which is what I enjoy. Yeah, and I actually have a funny story. I was I was sharing um, I was sharing some of this. I'll sh I'll I'll stop sharing and we can um, we can do a live example after this. But I was I was uh, sharing some of these best practices with a with a larger team of account executives at Microsoft and actually walked them through the same use case. And I got some messages yesterday where people who weren't getting responses for from a from a specific CIO um did exactly this exercise and got the meeting yeah. um, for this week i mean I can believe it yeah it's pretty cool i've always found that 
if you want somebody to respond to you, you've got to really empathize with that customer. What's top of mind for them? They've got so many people reaching out, right? A CIO of any company right now has really got 50 different software companies reaching out. Hey, come and talk to us about this. Come and talk to us about that. But if you're not empathizing with that customer, what are they going through right now? What are the risks they're trying to mitigate? What is top of mind for them in their industry? Yep. And coming to them and meeting them where they are, you haven't got a chance. There's no chance. So, yeah, that's where I spend that. This is the reason I want to have this conversation. Like, I spend so much time researching customers that this can just save me a bunch of time. And I'm really excited. And it's going to be better than what I could probably do myself, complete, yeah. to be completely frank. So, exactly. Exactly. it's impressive stuff. All right. Let's see. Let's see it in real time. Let's do it, man. So, um, you know, one of the things I, I can show you here, I'll share my screen. Um, so one of the one of the things that I'm actually doing right now is I'm getting ready for an event where we're we're bringing out customer out to a, a, a Microsoft location and we're really gonna um, help them transform. They're on a a digital transformation initiative where they're trying to look at their business holistically and kind of understand what the future is and and understand how Microsoft can help them. And one of the key pieces of of the of the uh, event is really telling the platform story, what makes Microsoft unique and taking into account the breadth of the Microsoft ecosystem. And like I told you, I'm new to I'm new to sales. I'm new to new the new to the portfolio. There's a ton for me to learn. So I need to create that talk track. I need to be able to tell that story. So um, I'm going to show you guys a way that you can you can create that story in a fraction of the time and make it be very very relevant and um, compelling. So you can see my screen, right? Yeah. So so I'm I'm going into ChatGPT and I'm giving it context, right? Again, the blank brain doesn't know anything. So I'm telling it I am a strategic seller at Microsoft. I need to succinctly explain what the Microsoft ecosystem is, what makes it unique, and explain the value of the Microsoft platform. I want to make the story exciting and compelling and interesting, something that would resonate with any executive across any industry and inspire them to want to work with Microsoft and truly understand the value of leveraging the platform for their business. So let's see what it gives me here. Absolutely. Here's a narrative you can use to describe the Microsoft ecosystem to a business executive in a compelling way. Imagine you're exploring an uncharted territory, but in this exploration, you're not alone. You have a comprehensive suite of tools, resources, and team of experts guiding you every step of the way. That's what it feels like to enter the Microsoft ecosystem, a vast interconnected landscape that fosters innovation, boosts productivity, and empowers businesses to grow and thrive. The uniqueness, you know, Microsoft isn't merely about uh, delivering tech solutions, so it's doing the legwork for me and yeah. I can after this output, I can show you how we can play with it and make it more relevant, maybe to a specific company, maybe to specific challenges. Sure. Um, but I hope this is giving you guys an idea of just how powerful this tool can be and how much time it could potentially save you. Yeah. Just trying to read through this. It's amazing. This is all just being generated in real time. Love it. Yeah, Tom, you've been at Microsoft much longer than me. Though. What do you think of this of this story? I know you've told the story multiple times. <laughs> I mean, this is doing a better job than what I could probably do, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. I'd say I'd say maybe it sounds a little bit. There's no there's no emotion in it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, there's no real like hey, you really need this, or, you know, collaboration project is the heart of Microsoft's philosophy. Yeah. Like Microsoft Teams, Office 360, like, you're not going to get that from it. But if I can take but you this can. message. I'll show, I'll show you. I'll show you. So, like, all right, so let, I want, let's let's poke some holes in it, right? All right. So what did you say? What did you say, what'd you say is, a, is an issue with this? You're saying no emotion, right? You want it to yep, be more no emotion. emotion. Is there any piece that, like, maybe you have a specific customer you're working with where you need to tell the story, right? Is there any... Let's, um, let's let's use McDonald's as an example. Everyone okay. knows McDonald's. Okay. I don't think they'll mind us 
trying to get into their brains. Yeah. So let, let's uh, so again, let's take that. Let's take that scenario. Let's say we want to tailor this specifically to McDonald's and what they care about. And let's say that we want to include more emotion. Maybe we want to make it more concise. Um, maybe we want to even embody a, a persona. So, so some things I've done in the past was I really like the way Steve Jobs presents or Tony Robbins, like he's a super engaging presenter, right? So I can change this and say, hey, make it for what McDonald's could care about and make it embody the the voice of Steve Jobs or the voice of Tony Robbins. But let's um let's quickly go to Bing Bing GPT first and just take a look at what is What's top of mind for for McDonald's right now? Let's say, um, you know, I. So again, same same idea. Doesn't know anything, right? So I am working. Okay, let's do this. I am a Microsoft um, sales professional uh, supporting the McDonald's account i am working on delivering a message around how the microsoft partnership uh, can add value to uh, to mcdonald's business um i need to understand what uh, initiatives are top of mind for them. Um, Maybe any risks they're trying to manage right now. So and a good any thing to risks with car that and any risks that they're trying to manage right now. Please give me a bulleted list of. Top of mind, any risks they're they're trying to manage right now? Please, uh, and please give me. Let's just say, please give me an overview of this. Let's just see what it says. McDonald's initiatives and risks. You can kind of see how how the search engines are breaking it down. McDonald's has a strategic plan called the Velocity Growth Plan, which is subject to execution risk. The most important aspects of the plan relate to whether the company can stay relevant, whether it can relate, remain a brand that customers trust. As more than half of McDonald's sales are from abroad, managing current risk is pivotal to the business, rising minimum wage, they have a social responsibility initiative, Microsoft or McDonald's has pledged to put itself on the path to net zero emissions by 2050. Perfect. These are all things that that are interesting. Um, is there anything else? Like, let's let's think about this together, Tom. Is there anything else that we can dig for with Microsoft or with McDonald's that I guess Microsoft just, could potentially help with? Let's say, obviously, Microsoft has a big sustainability goal themselves to be mm -hmm. carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. So we align on that. So potentially, how do we reach out to them and say, you know, Microsoft is well. Let's let's use that as a kicker, but going in there to sell them a dynamics platform to re-engineer their entire infrastructure. How do we make that relevant to what the the is top of mind for them right now? Right, social responsibility, you know, sales from abroad. So getting a, a bigger picture of what's going on company wide is probably important to them right now. Yeah, let's and say so. Grow I'm more, still right. I'm yeah, let's say I'm working on positioning a Dynamics 365 as a solution for McDonald's. Oh, uh, what other um, is there any linkage I can I can um, use find to tie back into their to, strategic objectives. Uh, Trying to build a point of view around this. Maybe put, uh, it, may, it might, uh, it does know what dynamics is, that's clever. Mm -hmm. 
Well, anyway, let's just for the sake of this, you you can keep playing around with this, but let, let's just take this right and pull in pull that into Chat GPT based on what the presentation that we're that we're working on, right? So I did some research on McDonald's, and here's some of the things top of mind for them. Uh, please weave that into the talk track and um, make the speech more more um, compelling or relevant. Yeah. Relevant and um, exciting. Yeah, and engaging. And yeah. let's embody, let's just say embody the voice of Steve Jobs. And then we'll put in the, the, the learnings. Thank you for providing the context. Let's now integrate these elements into the previous narrative, adopting the voice inspired by Steve Jobs. Imagine being on a voyage, not just any journey, but one to transform your business, an expedition that revolutionizes not just how you operate, but how you impact the world around you. This is the possibility when you venture into the Microsoft ecosystem. This is the journey we want to embark on. Now, McDonald's, you're a global pioneer a testament to the power of consistency and standardization. Your velocity growth program or plan is a bold and visionary strategy, much like the daring roadmap of the Microsoft ecosystem. Both are not without their risks, but as they say, a ship in a harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. Here's we're here to brave the stormy seas together to navigate the uncertainties of the digital age and to ensure that your growth plan remains on course. Over half of your sales originate from abroad. I think you guys get the idea, but wow. um, you know, it weaves all of that in. And let's say you have met with a bunch of you know McDonald's executives beforehand, and you really do understand their initiatives top of mind. You do understand their pains. You know, you can share some of those things, you know, there, um, and especially if it's public information. I, I, actually, a disclaimer here is if you if you have like a lot of you know customer sensitive information and, and company sensitive uh the guidance is definitely don't put it into <laughs> open ai because it, it uses it to feed its models um but you could still do a lot without doing that so it was like if you're working with a specific company you could just say uh, say that they're within a certain industry and here are the top of mind problems like without without uh given that confidential information. feeding the beast <laughs> exactly yeah um yeah, but I hope this gives you guys an idea. After this, yeah, you can incredible. say, you could say, hey, please shorten this, you know, say the same thing, but using less words, get right to the point, and you can continue to play with it, continue to to um, change it. Because at the end, it's gonna, <laughs> the journey might be challenging, but the sea might be rough, but in the words of, of Jobs, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. We're yeah. ready to change the world with us, McDonald's. Exactly, exactly, yeah. This and then you could say, and then you, you could so say, much. and then another thing, right? So, say you need to create slides after this. So, um, you know, I need to create a PowerPoint um, presentation with five slides. Um, you know, based so let's say based on this talk track. I need to create a PowerPoint presentation with three slides. Uh, give me the titles and body text in a bulleted format. Well, this would certainly save me some time as well. <laughs> yeah. Slide one, navigating the digital voyage together. Wow. And I guess when Copilot comes out at Microsoft, we'll be able to just tie these technologies in together. The future is so bright with this stuff, isn't it? It's just starting yeah. and it's already there. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, I've heard about some crazy cool. demos. I have heard about some crazy demos where you can, um, it'll be obviously weaved into like the business applications portfolio so that, you know, all the, the business users can use it. But within M365, 
like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, it'll all be tied together. So like if you have this in Word, you can change it into a PowerPoint and it'll just create the PowerPoint for you and do the formatting, the design, all that stuff. So pretty cool. Yeah, but I hope this this kind of gives gives an idea. I think the really what I'm what I've been learning as I've been sharing this across the organization and talking to people is um, people have just not played with this thing yet. And if you don't get anything out of this video, just go play with it. Go to the website, start playing around, ask it questions, have it do random things for you. Start prepping for meetings using it. And I don't think you'll be sorry. Well done. How about this? We'll do a touch point in six months from now. So today is May 18th. Six months from now, we're going to come back and we'll say, what's changed? And we'll do an update to this because being that this has been out just a few months now, right? I'm so excited to see how this is going to evolve over the next six months. Yeah. Daniel, yeah. thank you for your time. And uh, thank you. look forward to that in the future. It's been incredible. Can't wait to get started. Have a good Thanks, day. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for the opportunity. You too. Cheers.